now beaming into Nerd FT Radio. This is Nerd FT Radio, where nerds full time, explorers of the metaverse, surfers of the blockchain, and not in our mom's basement. I'm your host, RSG, aka Twitter Verified now. And I'm oh, here with Crypto Crier, aka Not Your Keys, Not Your Coins. Crier, <laughs> what a day. What a Jeez. last, the last two days have been insane. one for the books. One yeah, for the books. Insane. Extremely, extremely wild. Yeah. And if you live under a rock, FTX literally just went insolvent over one day because the owner of Binance, CZ, said, we're going to sell some of these FT tokens. And it went from 22 to like $2. So 90% loss in what, a couple of 48 hours. 48 hours? Insane. Wow. Yeah. And obviously <laughs> the first news that broke out of this was that Binance was actually in agreement to purchase out Sam yep. and FTX and bring them over. And overnight, something just happened. Obviously, there's speculation I, that it was a play, like to, yeah. you know, give them a little, a last little <laughs> jab and turn and turn yank and everything. I yeah, turned the knife a little bit and yank out. But of course, again, last night it was more of the sense of, or yesterday. So for you guys, it would be on Monday. This is when the news was starting to break out a little bit or Tuesday, Tuesday, excuse me, Tuesday. Um, we were like, oh, Binance is coming to save it. And of course we wake up to, yeah, yeah. we're not saving shit. We're ready to go. Let's get it. Let's see what happens. And at, right now it's just, Cryer, how, where's your head out with all of this? Like, wh what yeah, do you think for sure. again for, for you personally, like you're more in the, in the crypto space more than myself at least. So you for probably... Sure. Not affected, but you understand, like you're feeling the effects of it if it is from, uh, let's say, day trading or options or anything that you're doing throughout the day. So yeah. what's going on in your head with all this? For sure. Yeah. So pretty much it was definitely a play. There was never, an, Seems there was like never going to, it was never going to be purchased. He opened that line of communication to see what his books were at and see how much what they were in the hole. Looking at a, probably a minimum of 6 billion to upwards of 8 to 10 billion of a, of a hole. So no way he would just pay money to just re you know to fill up the the to spend it all on people just getting their money back that would definitely be not a good business move so this was just more of a power play to get all the get all the last kind of survivors of ftx i would say it was a little bit of hopium but i mean it really was just trying to do due diligence if it was something that they really didn't have a lot of damage on the books it could have been went through but i i really don't think he would ever, he was ever planning I mean, he's the main no, competitor. Makes sense. At being FTT token is a competitor, and so is Solana is a competitor of you know Binance and BNB. The, there would be no way, or no reason for them to even use that token if they were going to purchase it. Like, there's a lot of it would have just died anyways. So it wouldn't have been. It would be more, mm -hmm. more of just like using them for the customer base. But I mean, this is actually, I'm doing some research on it. It's more of a, a longer term play than we might think it is. So Binance has been having no fees on trading for Bitcoin and Ethereum for a couple months. And what that okay. has done is taken all of the liquidity from FTX. They were, they were not getting all of the trades because people were now going to Binance because it's free to trade. So we're seeing a lot of crypto people were switching because hey i don't want to pay fees and you can switch in instantaneously so we've seen them ftx is buying every company left and right they're trying to be the saviors of the crypto market they overextended by a ton thinking that they were pretty much like gods at this point right like they that guy's been printing money upwards of between seven and ten million dollars a day in revenue for a very long time so let, let me let, let me ask you really quick. So obviously we know that Sam has been more on the side of like regulation and be like an upfront yeah. person, like trying to get regulation through into crypto, through into 100%. the blockchain, the whole nine yards. For me, that seems so weird. Am I the only, like, I hopefully that yeah. doesn't, it, it, it feels weird for you too, because again, imagine if all like Sam's doing his thing, he gets it through regulation comes in and all these things, all these things that's going on right now, they were going to unfold anyways. 
if it wasn't for like what play, like I just, I don't understand why he would be so up on the side of like regulation, but also yeah. like he's, he's been like lying biggest this whole time and like and biggest fraud history of exactly so of money at this yeah point. i i think it's truly like it's just weird like and it could be that god complex that yeah. you're talking about like well but what was that move to try to get go towards regulation if like <laughs> that way was literally gonna <laughs> show everyone that like yeah, you're the you're book. lying the yeah. only i mean the only thing i can think of is you know he you can definitely tell in like some of his later, like most recent videos of him talking and stuff like that. He's super anti. It looked like he gained like thirty or forty pounds recently. Also, just I mean, I'm sure he's like under an insane amount of stress. So you definitely know oh, this been away at him for a while. But probably happened with like the June, you know, cascade and fallout. And he just he was he sur- he like survived by the hair of his teeth and was trying to find a way to bring in as much income as fast as possible. And that's why he's like making all these purchases, I think. But I mean, realistically, yeah, it was, it was definitely, you know, a bloodbath, you know? So Binance saw the weakness. He, they overextended. He said that multiple times throughout this entire bear market, you know, don't overextend. We, there's always, you know, there's no reason to do this as an exchange. You don't need to be overextending. You don't be buying companies. You don't be doing anything. Do what you do. Do it right. Make a good product. People will come to you. You know, there there was a time when I would say CG at the beginning of crypto or like towards the, like when I started getting in 2016, he definitely had some like really shady shit, but I would definitely say he's been ever since like the whole, he like switched headquarters a bunch of times. And I, 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 he's definitely been the last couple of years. He's definitely been on the right side of just, you know, making okay. sure everything for the customer wise is is solid. I mean, again, we have no idea again, right? So he is he did say coming out and say that he wants to have full proof of reserve on chain, which which is very good. I think that's a really good good move. Kraken already does this as an exchange, and I I don't think Coinbase does, but I, I'm sure they would start doing as well if Binance does it. But that's just a step in the right direction. I mean, realistically, the step in the right direction is to get rid of centralized exchanges. I say it constantly. I only use decentralized exchanges. You know, you have, you still have the currency in your, in your actual wallet. Like that whole thing else we always talk about is that you are that boat, you know, and you can go to different ports. You don't need to have your money stored somewhere if you know what you're doing. And it, it just takes practice. It just takes some time to learn these things, but they're 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 pretty simplistic over time. Like it, it does, it's not that difficult. It becomes pretty you know second nature after a while, and it's it saves you a lot. I mean, like again, I had I've already been through this before. But the reason I'm telling you this right now is because I've already been down this pathway. I had 50 e stuck in KuCoin for a month, and it was like terrifying. You know, like I literally oh, yeah. could at the time ETH wasn't worth a lot. But I mean, it was still a good like, still? I don't know, a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, it was still like thirty, forty thousand dollars, I think. And uh, yeah, it's just it's definitely not worth the the trouble to. You don't get anything that beneficial. You can find all these coins on decentralized exchanges. You just have to learn how to use them. It just takes a little bit more effort. And again, like it's it's there's there's nothing worse than you know counterparty risk. You you have to protect yourself. This is the Wild West. It will never change until there is regulation. And when there is regulation, it's just going to be the same as stocks. Like you're not going to be able to make money, which is how we have been, right? So it's going to be all different, just a different, different beast. So, you know, I really think that FTX and the whole Binance thing, all of this stuff, I do think it was a little bit calculated on Binance side. You know, he, all of his tweets were literally perfect. Like, hey, he he's we're, questioned. We're playing. <laughs> we're playing chess and he's playing 3d chess. So it looks yeah, like for sure. that's what's going on. I mean, yeah, it was definitely a, a masterful move. He there, bef- the first tweet he sent, they had $400 million withdrawn. I think it was four, maybe $450 million withdrawn in a couple of hours after that first tweet where he said, I don't know. We, we don't know if there's any problems, but I don't want to be a repeat of Luna. And he said it like that. He's like, we learned from Luna. And then like instantly $450 million was, was, was deposit or withdrawn from FTX. And then uh, Binance had 411 million with uh, deposited. So 
that alone right there was a huge move on his part. The next part was obviously talking about the sale. You know, he was going to sell, what do you have, $3 billion worth of FTT. And he said over, you know, we, we don't know what we want to do with it. We want to get rid of it. We don't want to have Luna experience again. And then he did he like did he mention did he meant if I'm not mistaken, did he mention that he wasn't going to do it all at once? He was going to like spread it out. And then he was like, oh, yeah, fuck this yeah. shit. Wham. And just like. Took yeah, it I mean, it was already happening. It was already there? happening. As yeah, soon as he tweeted that, he, he already knew that it, this was happening. Like okay. there was no way he would have said that publicly if he didn't know this was happening. He it's very calculated. But I mean, realistically, it's. I think it's a good thing. I mean, he's policing the system a little bit. I think that's how all crypto should be. You know, we should all be calling out people who are doing wrongdoing. Anytime Absolutely. I see shit that I don't like, I, I'm vocal about it. I don't care what oh, people yeah. think. I, if it's going to help people not get rugged or not, you know, lose money, I will say it. Like, it's it's that's how it should be. So, I mean, I think he definitely kind of knew a little bit of the setup, but I definitely think, you know, it went in his favor, but don't fucking gamble you're not a bank you cannot fractional reserve crypto it's insanely volatile there will there will never be a time that you are going to be doing this on a centralized exchange unless it's backed with like fdic insurance and all you know like again regulation and all that stuff that's the only time if you actually have a banking license if you're actually going to be protected by the government like you're you literally exactly. are gambling with six billion dollars of the average joe's money right now and, and for the awesome. for the individuals, yeah, and for the individuals that are outside viewing in, and obviously for years and years, people saying how crypto could be a Ponzi, it can be a scam, and the whole nine yards, and just seeing just this it, unfold right? the way it is, it could somewhat it, people can say it proves to the fact that this is something that not the average person might be like might not want to get into just yet, and it might be because of the non-regulated rules here or non-regulated sure. ways where again you are protected in some cases or most cases on the side of stocks and your bank and all this stuff with the policies and everything via the government when you talk about the when you talk about not having or if it's not your keys it's not your it's not your assets it's not your coins for yeah. the people that again that you might not understand it very much what would you say to them like exactly what they have to do again a yeah, lot sure. of us go through Coinbase, not FTX anymore. Try to go on their website. It's not there. Coinbase, Kraken, let's say, yeah. what else do we do? Binance, I guess. Uh, what other one to go to? But yeah. So like- What would you do so exactly? So on, like, on this side, talking, this is- re Really quick. Apparently talking, FTX US is fine. So they didn't have okay. a lot of issues on that side. What's the, so, what's the difference between FTX US and FTX? What just happened FTX there? Like, US is the US-based company- they only do spot. They don't do like derivative trading, really. You can't do like leveraging as much. Whereas the FTX.com is like the, the global entity, which is like everybody okay. else. They are allowed to do like high leverage trading, all this other stuff. But as of right now, people I've seen people saying that FTX US is fine. I mean, I would never use them again. Ever. Anyways, you know, yeah. This, this is, yeah, absolutely. no matter what it is. Again, like when you are getting money in, I really do pretty much only recommend Coinbase nowadays. I mean, Kraken okay. is fine too. Gemini's had a good record. But just for, you know, Coinbase is making the right moves. I would say they have, they're starting to do like a, a monthly service fee and you get insurance and all this stuff that comes with it. If you're like a larger trader and you're, you know, like a, you know, say like an institutional stock trader or something like that or you're, you know, someone like a accredited investor or someone able to, you know, throw some money at this, there's better options with Coinbase because they do allow you to have some sort of insurance to, to like learn the, 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 the nuances of this stuff first, right? So, I mean, I would go over the insurance limit and stuff like that with Coinbase still. But again, like once you actually learn what you're doing, you take your money, deposit on Coinbase, buy the crypto, and then ex send that crypto to a ledger a treasure some sort of secondary confirmation device which they call hard wallets is the only way to have a little bit more security than just like a metamask or something like that um, so let me ask you let me ask you there so even if let's say i'm even going to say for myself you know that i have my metamask my ledgers on the side but i haven't set it up for some some things so yeah. on the case of a MetaMask that's that cold wallet, 
do yeah. you see risks in that? Not on the security side of like phishing links and people trying to scam you, et cetera, more on the sense of something like this happening where MetaMask is like, yeah, we can't process anything. We can't do anything. Like how exactly does that work in your eyes or how it actually works? Like what's that difference? Is there a difference yeah. if I only have that cold wallet compared to that hard wallet? For sure. Yeah. Is I mean, having question. the MetaMask is still, you own your keys. Like you still okay, have I just to want have to make that. sure. Okay. Yeah. Even though it is considered like a hot wallet is still your yeah. personal it's your account own, and wallet. Yeah. yeah. Got it. It's not an Excel spreadsheet saying that uh, you own Bitcoin. It's, you know, it's there. Exactly. It's on that. It's stored in that inside that wallet. So yeah, definitely on that side. Sorry, I missed uh, your question. But no, yeah, no like you're good. You're good. It's, but again, like it's very simple to click. Yes. Like there's, you always want Absolutely. to have as many conversations as, as you can. Like it's, it's, I mean, it's this a, past year, a I'm a blanket. very savvy crypto user. I've been doing it for a very long time there. I literally was, you know, maybe be five minutes from getting hacked by somebody in the, in the gutter cat discord because I they had the that. same names. They had all these things. Like it was super, I mean, that was very well done. It was made to entrap people. And be, if I wasn't like just slow, like I was just, it, everything was urgent. Everything was very urgent. They're always want to do urgent things. I was just like, hey, I'll, t I'll get to you later about the trade or whatever. And then they just kind of didn't harass me. And then it kind of came back later. And I was like, yeah, I think that's a good trade. And then I luckily just reached out to somebody in the gutter cat and just gang and said, hey, do you know these people? Can you get me in touch with them or whatever? Yeah, and they're like, yeah, that's not not a real trade, so shut it down. But like, if I even if I had done it, I still think I would have caught on by confirmation. Like, you still have to bring the bust the thing out. You have to do all these extra steps. So it definitely has saved people before. I think in the long term. Absolutely. So now let me ask you a more serious question: What country is Sam going to flee to? <laughs> I don't know. He's already filed for bankruptcy. Apparently, I did see which... that. I have no idea. I mean, it's, I mean, this is just like literally insane. There was on up only yesterday or yeah, it was yesterday. Yeah. Yep. Which is another podcast for crypto. They had Duquan and Martin Scarelli or whatever his name is. And they were just, he's literally just asking people that have either been on the run or past imprisonment to come on the show and, and talk about like what's going to happen here. And it was just like, just the most insane chat ever. But yeah, I mean, I, I just can't believe that this stuff is happening. And look at this too. Like the Duquan's still on the run. You know, people like Scarelli are, are now, he, you know, he, when he served like two years in prison for yeah. dumping a drug. He's like, it's not that bad. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. He said it was, he's he on the, on the thing, he said it was a good thing that he did that, by the way. No remorse for doing that. And then he, you know, and then the person who wrote code for for tornado cash is still in prison <laughs> didn't steal any money in, you know it's insane. just like this some of this shit just blows my mind you know it's just i can't believe it but yeah i mean ftx down i can't believe them saying that because it, he had the most promise like up and coming super smart dude everything he said was on a technical level he definitely knew what the hell he was talking about he was constantly giving away money in terms of like for like conservatory stuff, very, you know, the whole philanthropist thing, you know, he's given a ton of money away. So I really thought it was just like, he wasn't greedy and it was just, you know, I don't know. I just don't know. I just, I want to, I want to hear the whole story because this is just literally. And especially from story. him. I don't want to hear from other people. I want, yeah, I don't want to hear rumors. I just want to hear what, what the yeah. happened. Like this is like what happened. What he, what um, steps did he take that weren't, he shouldn't have taken. And I, yeah, and is it, is it something where like the company was doing this stuff without him knowing, or like it was? I just like when did he find out about yeah, this? Crazy. I don't think it was. I think it had to have been either soon or just literally in or so, two months. Full, just like disbelief or something. I don't know. But, like it's definitely yeah. a crazy story. No, I definitely agree. Again, for all those individuals that were affected by that, you're listening. Again, I'm sorry. Yeah. Put your put your coins in a ledger. Stop using exchanges. Buy Crier's T-shirt. That's going to be in big letters. <laughs> not your, <laughs> not your keys. Not your coins. And NRN yeah. on the back. So again, just that's right. Just be careful out there. Like Crier said, it, it is the Wild West, and you just got to make sure you yeah. know it. And if you're in this space now, 
you you owe it to yourself to understand to understand this that you have to own your you have to own the key you have to own the actual yeah. coins themselves and if it's from the ledger side or just your own wallet itself just understanding security understanding safety within the space if you're going to be in it right now obviously in the future we hope that there is a better way better security and easier use case for everyone in the world not the just not us degens yep. that just figured it out now and we're going through the hoops and everything right now and again we just hope later down the road it's not like this at all yeah, but let's agree. go ahead into go you have something else to say yeah i was just gonna say like on the edge of just like tokens and how the price is right now you know everyone's kind of seeing I mean, Bitcoin's in a free fall, Ethereum's in a free fall here. We had a little bit of recovery now, but, you know, these are the types of events personally that, you know, I'm, these are things that I buy, right? So I bought in June, been buying since June, DCA purchases. This is another place that I will be buying more tokens. There's nothing wrong with the underlying assets. It's always someone greedy human that's fucking up <laughs> yep. everything else, right? Exactly. There's nothing wrong with Bitcoin. It's still doing what it's supposed to be doing. There's nothing wrong with Ethereum. It's still doing what it's supposed to be doing. And these are, you know, these are the types of moments where you see a giant cascade down. You could see some recovery, you know, in the next couple of years for sure. So that's my other two cents of, you know, these are, these are moments where it does look insane, but you know, this is time to buy small purchases over a long period of time small purchases stay in the community be a part of it build do all the stuff that just you know you want to be a part of all of this because again that's why we're here and for all you that are here just for money well it looks like you gotta wait a few years because it ain't looking too hot right now so we'll de we'll definitely see what happens there but let's go on the lighter note of things i know that we we definitely had to talk about this this was super a very impactful moment obviously we're an nft blockchain podcast but of course with things like this in on the crypto yeah, side as well, which just... is honestly goes around, but we do need to talk about it. We want to make sure that you guys understand what's going on, but let's kind of do like, I'll, I'll do a little speed round for us. Cause we're trying to, let's try to keep this episode a little bit on, on the shorter side. Even I would love to talk a little bit more on the, on the blockchain side, on the NFT side, or what I like to call what web two company is coming into web three and obviously we already we do this every single time but we've already talked about this one and it's been on the instagram side of it meta not only did meta lay off eleven thousand people today but also also <laughs> good news they had a few artists drop some nfts on instagram and they sold out in like three seconds so yeah. if you want to take something good from meta today <laughs> which is probably literally nothing the one yeah. thing is that they did have some artists. Of those artists, a lot of you know these people already. Drift had a drop. Amber, Victoria. Is it Victoria or Victor? Yeah, I think it's Victor Victoria. V-I-T-T-O-R-I-A. Victoria. Victoria? Victoria. I'm not sure Victoria. which the person that you're talking about. Well, you know what? Name. We're going with the second one. It's Amber. Great job, Amber. Uh, number three <laughs> is Sarah, which is actually the cre the artist of Women and Weapons, if I'm not mistaken, as well. So those three individuals had drops today. These drops range like hundreds of dollars, even almost a thousand dollars on the drift side, and they all completely sold out. And it's truly remarkable. Again, on the drift side, I'll give you an example. He had 50 pieces that he dropped digital collectibles. Remember, Trojan Horse, we're not using NFT anymore. 50, 50 digital collectibles at $999.99, and they sold out literally in like a second, two seconds. The good side of things that I will talk about Instagram here is the ability to purchase these NFTs and how simple it was, not only on the purchasing side, but also on the creator side where you just upload, click royalty, boom, what chain, boom, 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 and then you let it out. And then on the side of the being the person purchasing, super easy process, simple. It's pretty much like if you go on eBay, Amazon, any place. Any place you buy your stuff at, it's just click, boom, boom. You already have your credit card and you click submit. You're good to go. So on that side, kudos. On this side, the people that bought these NFTs probably were already in the NFT game beforehand. Because like, yeah, you can't convince me that someone that has never bought an NFT just spent $1,000 on Drift. No, nothing bad to Drift. The guy was great. Awesome dude. A lot of people said that Cena kind of looks like him. It was really funny at VCon when someone came up to Cena and goes, <laughs> Cena, I mean, are you Drift? And Cena's like, 
what? Like, what's going on? Just because I'm bald? Like, what's going on here? But again, it, it, it is super cool to see it, but also on the sense of let's try to get a lot more going with it to see like smaller artists and larger collections and more on other chains and whatnot. So it, it definitely is going to be interesting. But again, if you want to take at least one good thing, one good thing from today on the meta side, they sold some NFTs in, in a few seconds because <laughs> the rest, Mark Zuckerberg literally just came out and said, yeah, I messed up. I hired way too many people. That's the one thing on that side. Now, the real interesting side, even though we have talked about Japan multiple and multiple and multiple and multiple and multiple times because they're actually one of the countries that see Web3 as a truly massive opportunity to adv- yeah. not only not only advance technology worldwide but advance their country as a whole and what has happened is that japan's biggest phone operator do you remember the name crier <laughs> yeah ntt uh, Do- ntt doko docomo 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 ntt docomo which is like i said japan's largest mobile phone network has pledged to Verizon invest up to four, yes, up to Verizon of Japan, literally up to four billion USD, so six hundred billion yen into Web three infrastructure. Again, they're going to be collaborating with Astar Foundation, which is a developer of a public blockchain, the Astar Network. And again, it's pretty much going to try to accelerate the Web three adoption for the country to advance in all different sectors. Again, we've talked about Japan on the sense of their government supporting yeah, Web three. Supporting the, the ministry and everything, exactly. Supporting the the next step of going into the digital world, the digital realm of things. And again, it's just truly From like a remarkable. Side, is, yeah, exactly. It's yeah. very, very remarkable to see, like on the go- on a government side, to be like, hey, this is this is the future. We're going to pledge pledge towards it instead of having you know our government say like, yeah, we don't know what the hell's going on yet. So, but you still got to pay us taxes on it. So we'll see what happens. But <laughs> yep. again, it's right. super I got cool. a little, I got a little crazy cool fact here that I that Ooh. also happened to. Ooh, uh, hit it. Looks like the U.S. government is now the largest holder of Bitcoin. Correct. They've apprehended. They've taken yeah. so much Bitcoin <laughs> from so many people. And I don't know if they've sold it or not, but like they probably they have sold it in the past. But now it. they're just stockpiling yeah, upwards of 150,000 Bitcoin. So hear me out. Yeah. 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago, it was so hard to find like the next play unless you were in the 5% that understood what was going on. Yeah, if sure. it was inside, if it was inside trade, if it was all this. And one of the forms that now is helping the average Joe out is obviously social media, technology, the internet, the yeah. whole nine. When I, as a, as a individual look into like, what's the next, like, what are people going to do? I actually look on the recruiting side, go to Apple, go to Google, go to Tesla, Go to Microsoft, go to Disney, see those job postings of what exactly they're hiring for. Obviously, at Disney, they're hiring for attraction people because no one wants to do that. But outside of that, (laughs) they are also hiring for metaverse individuals, people in the blockchain, the whole nine. You look at Apple, you look at Tesla, you look at all these people. Product managers of high-end blockchain side. Exactly. So back in the day those little hints of like where the next the next wave is people just didn't have it because if you wanted to apply to a job you had to grab your piece of paper your resume that you had to print out somehow and you had to walk to the place and be like hey i want to apply i want a a chance at your job now with the internet social media what's going on news breaking all this stuff the opportunity for the average person to understand what's going on is literally right in front of you if you just put in the time and, and effort we are seeing massive companies even the the most massive company, which is the United States government, hoarding how much Bitcoin? Roughly 150,000. They just, they got 50,000, 53,000 Bitcoin from a guy who was living in Gainesville, Georgia, just chilling for the last 10 years. By the way, I didn't even know there was Gainesville, Georgia, by the way, because like, I thought Gainesville (laughs) was the poultry capital of the world. Yeah. Did did not know. So just hanging um, out at his house. Doing his a, thing with a with fifty thousand bitcoins in a popcorn tin. Was it was it actually a popcorn tin? It was taped it was to on. the bottom of a popcorn tin. Oh my lord! Well, there you have it. Again, 
when you see an entity like a, co- a, a company, I'm going to keep saying that, a company like the United States government hoarding <laughs> upwards to so much Bitcoin, you don't th- and they're not selling it, you don't think like they maybe see a future with <laughs> what's about to happen. Whoa, they might not say it publicly, but things happen on the back and we need to be aware of what's going on. We need to be aware of everything that's happening on the left, on the right, in the middle, in the center of everything at all. But again, it's just super cool. I, I wouldn't, I don't like to say super cool. It's just not concerning either. Just, you know, you should probably hold on to your Bitcoin. You should probably hold on to your Ethereum is all I'm going to say. And we should, we should be able to ride this out. But other than that, Cryer, any, anything else that we have going? I don't know, man. That was about it. It's been a rough couple of days. It It was, it was fun, but bad. (laughs) Trading wise, it was literally crazy though. It's been a rough couple of days for the space, but at least I got Twitter verified. There you go. I'm just going to say that out there. Shout out to Elon Musk for allowing me to be verified. Thank you to the Boston Red Sox for allowing me to be the Red Sox guy. And for all the (laughs) listeners at home, remember. Yeah, I got nothing. Just put your freaking coins in your damn wallet. Like, don't put it in exchange. That's all I got to say. If there's one takeaway from this episode, it's going to be just put your damn coins and your tokens and your NFTs and your Dogecoin that Elon told you to buy an SNL. Put it all in your freaking wallet instead of an actual exchange. And we should be riding good. (laughs) Golly. Last thing I'll say. One more thing. Black Panther is out. While you're listening to this, oh, that, this tonight, Thursday, we're ready to go. Black Panther's yeah. out. Get ready for it. I can't wait. There's so much on the line here with so many characters they're bringing in. I cannot wait. I have a vi- – I will say this, and I hope I, I bite my tongue on this, and this actually doesn't happen. I'm a little worried because it's been out for like two weeks on the red carpet side, and people have seen it. And all I've heard is I couldn't stop crying. Even people that didn't know Marvel couldn't stop crying, but like that's all I'm hearing, and <laughs> I want obviously more. I've said it here on the episode, but on one of the episodes before, I think they might introduce a little bit, you know, a little Doctor Doom at the end, maybe. Who knows? A little, you know, a little, little segue into some other stuff. But we're obviously a uh, Nomar. He's he's gonna be one of the first X Men in the MCU. So again, we're. I just hope they do something something crazy but i haven't heard any like massive rumbles so again just hope hope the movie's good it's just gonna be a tearjerker sure. i literally cried like i already cry for like every single marvel movie anyways and <laughs> nothing bad happens so imagine when something like what happened with chad bozeman and all yeah. this like what happens with this like i'm gonna come i'm gonna ugly cry the whole time so it's just gonna be bad <laughs> But, but again, for all you, hold hair back for you. <laughs> yeah, hold my, my, the girlfriend and my two friends are going to hold my hair back. But uh, for everyone listening at home again, thank you guys so much for tuning into another episode of nerd FT radio. We'll be back next week with more news. And hopefully by then you already put your, you know, your news. tokens. Yeah. We have number one, you got better <laughs> news. And number two, you put them damn tokens in an actual wallet that you That's own right. your seed phrase, the whole nine. We'll catch you guys next week. Peace. Peace.